Now, in Australia, officials believe almost uh, 2,000 homes have been destroyed since the country's bushfire crisis began. Firefighters are capitalising on the milder weather conditions to try and uh, boost containment lines around the blazes engulfing southeastern Australia as people there prepare for things to get worse later this week. Uh, let's just get the very latest. Uh, Lucy has been uh, looking at events over the past 12 hours. So these bats have really been struggling with climate change and the extreme heat temperatures we've been having. Their mothers haven't been able to feed them enough, so they've been abandoned. Um, in the Shoalhaven alone, we've had thousands and thousands of bats die. Um, these guys are the lucky ones. They were saved when they were just 30 days old and we've been raising them ever since and they will go out back into the wild to hopefully reproduce and make more babies. And the worry for the bats is? So um, with climate change, the bats aren't doing very well. Um, alone in the last month, we've had thousands die. In the last year, they're just getting decimated. Um, over the next few years, we'll probably see the decline of the bats and possibly the extinction of at least two species. These guys are threatened species as it is. So any loss is a huge loss to um, the populations. Um, they're very important for the Australian bush. They're the most important long range pollinators of the eucalypt forests and now we don't have very many left from the fires. So Nikki, show me what you've got in here, who we've got. Okay, so in here we have a baby mountain brush tail possum. So he's had to be evacuated as well with us. Um, he'll be released into the wild. These guys are in care for a very long time. We'll have him for close to a year. Um, baby kangaroos and wombats are in care for about two years, so it's a long time commitment. It's going to take decades and decades for the bush to regenerate properly. Um, you know, the impacts of fire um, beyond just what we see with the green tree leaves and all that sort of stuff. There's impacts to the soil, there's impacts to um, the insects and all that sort of stuff. You just, year after year, see less and less frogs. You see less and less, you know, of those little species that can't handle big changes. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it's really scary. Uh, that was Lucy speaking to uh, somebody who's been rescuing uh, some of the wildlife there. In fact, Lucy can join us now. Uh, Lucy, you're in Wandundian. What's the situation like there at the moment? Hi, Tim. Yes, it's just past nine in the evening here in rural Wandundian, and I'm in the middle of pretty burnt out bush. Uh, everyone here feels very much in a state of limbo because it's been cooler here and there has been some rain, but we're expecting the heat and the wind to return in the coming days and that's so worrying for people of course. Um, let me just show you what is happening in terms of across the whole country. This is quite an amazing uh, visualisation done by NASA. Among the worst uh, of the fires of course here in Australia is in New South Wales and the focus is very much as well on these three huge fires which officials fear could merge into a mega blaze across New South Wales and the Victoria border. And firefighters have, we think, about a 48-hour window to tackle the front uh, before temperatures spike again on Friday. Now, as I mentioned, I'm in the middle of the bush and driving here, we came off the Princess Highway, which is a main road here in Australia. It is mile upon mile of blackened and charred bush. And uh, we wanted to bring you a very personal perspective of what is happening with the bushfires. And I'm on the property of Adrena and Al Sellers. And the drive to their property, tragically, just shows the scale of the devastation really because it is absolutely a picture of devastation and Adrena is with me now her property may not be in a good state incredibly we're right at her gate and Adrena your house survived goodness knows why but someone else survived too who have yes, you got this is this is Bernie <laughs> that's an appropriate name yes and um, he was found just a couple of weeks ago just um, when the south coast fires were starting um, and he was found by some um, R um, RMS, so the, the Roads and Maritime Services, who have to go through and check the roads for any trees and power lines and things like that that may have come down and be unsafe before they can open the highway. Um, so they saw this, him and his little buddy, a little girl, um, that were just very displaced looking and they managed to rescue them and um, being the coordinator, they, lots of these end up here with me. And how is he doing? How has He's Paul... doing really well. Um, unfortunately his um, feet have been burned and hence he has, needs dressings. 
um, and um, but he's doing well. The tips of his ears have been damaged, um, but he's doing really well. He's got through the worst of it, so it's a matter of just getting those feet back to normal, and so he can. It's really grow nice up to talk be. about a, a, a tale of survival here yeah. because across yeah. New South Wales, it's just oh. a horrible figure, Adrena. Half a billion animals yeah. have it's suffered. Absolutely devastating, and um, it's just. Just, it's heartbreaking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, heartbreaking, unimaginable, sorry, <laughs> it's quite emotional. Um, but he's doing well, and so is his friend. And what about the other kangaroos? Because you were worried they wouldn't come back, some of your kangaroos, and they have. Yeah, it was wonderful to, to see them earlier. We had to release um, some that were um, re almost ready for release, but and too big to move. So we had to um, release them on the property and just hope that they had enough time to find safe places. And they did, the whole, all of them have survived. One of them only has um, burnt feet, but all the rest uh, seem to be perfect at this stage, including one mama <laughs> with a new joey. So That is really wonderful exciting. news. Mm -hmm. What about your evacuation? Was that oh, traumatic? It's so traumatic, it's unbelievable. Um, the idea of having to leave behind everything, um, you can deal with the losing house, um, leaving the animals behind was really heartbreaking. Um, so it was so so relieving to see them come back when when you know I managed to get in and visit the property and to see the fa little faces and everything was pretty. pretty How many exciting. times did you have you evacuated? We've evacuated four times, um, and the last time we stayed out. So uh, and the fourth time there was. Um, Two fires that came while we were out the last the last time. So we were out from New Year's Eve, and we've only come back last night. And your house survived. And my house survived, and the the shed survived, and it's unbelievable. How and do you even begin to rebuild now, Adrena? What well, goes through your mind when you look when at you the look, bush behind you? Well, it's it's really sad, but I know I'm looking forward to seeing all the little green chips and everything coming out and um, it it growing back again because it will grow back. Um, we've lost uh, a lot. It's very black out there. It's very. It's probably the worst side here from, you know, from this side. But yeah, it's really, really. Uh, yeah. Thank you for it's sharing really... your home and your story and your kangaroos yeah. with us. We're so <laughs> pleased to see that Bernie is doing well. At Tim, um, really, it is as I mentioned earlier: six million hectares of land across Australia charred and burnt. And the story of the wildlife is truly tragic. I mean, there are real fears that it's going to take years, perhaps decades, for some species to come back. Uh, Two billion dollars of recovery aid pledged by Scott Morrison today, but uh, we are expecting the wind and the heat to return. This could go on for many weeks yet. Goodness. Okay. Uh, Lucy, with the very latest uh, there, thank you very much indeed.